In this video, we're going to review differential calculus. Now, just this video isn't meant to be a complete, um, you know, treatment of differential calculus in one video. This is really meant to give you the concepts that you're going to be responsible for in this class, give you a general overview and kind of motivate where you should be reviewing and boning up your own math skills. Um, in order to prepare yourself for physical chemistry. And differential calculus is a great place to start. Now, why do we care about this in physical chemistry? So let me kind of give you the, the why before we start to talk about the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, physical chemistry is very much interested in the extent to how, um, how certain properties change with respect to other properties, right? So for example, um, how does a change in temperature affect the pressure of a system? How does a change in temperature affect the volume, right? How does it affect the density, right? So you can imagine that all of these properties that we're going to discuss are going to be functions of certain variables. And one of the questions that we'll constantly be asking ourselves is how does this thermodynamic property or how does this state property change with respect to changes in other variables how are they related we might have a function that defines these but then we might need to derive something on on how do these things change with respect to other variables and that's all that differential calculus is centered around uh, defining rates of change, how something changes with respect to an infinitesimal change in another variable. So let's look at the general definition for a derivative, right? So let's say we have some function, let's say we have a function y that is some function of x, right? So you have some function y that's a function of the variable x. Right. So um, so, you know, if you're thinking about it as a general math problem, let's say we have some function y that's equal to five X or something like that. Right. Uh, some function y that is a function of the variable X. If we want to get the um, if we want to look at the change of y with respect to X, uh, we can express this in what's called Leibniz notation. Leibniz notation named after a guy named Leibniz from like the 15, 1600s or something like that. Um, so basically what we do is say dy, which is the change in y over dx, right? And this is always writ, um, said as the you know derivative of y with respect to x. And what that is, um, if you remember, you know, how we deal with limits, right? So basically we're taking the limit as the change in x goes to zero of delta y over delta x, right? And this is actually a really useful definition for us because that means if we can define a function for y or if we can define a function for some variable, basically we're looking at the slope, right? This is just rise over run, right? dy over dx. So if you can plot something in some two-dimensional representation, some function, then you can easily get its derivative and be able to interpret the consequences of that derivative function, right? So on the left, I have a plot, right? Just so we can see a, a visual representation of what we're looking at here, right? So on the y-axis is y, on the, the vertical axis is y, the horizontal axis is x, right? Um, so let's say you're interested at, uh, um, you're interested in the slope at a particular point, right? So these purple, um, this purple dot is the point that we would be interested in on this function. Right, let's say we're interested in the slope at that at that point. What you would do is in order to get the slope at that point is draw a line tangent to the curve. It's usually straight. I did my best to draw a straight line here. But um, basically, you draw a line tangent to the curve and you would look at the slope of that tangent line. Basically, what this limit statement is telling you is that this becomes a better approximation of the change in y at that point with respect to x as this delta x gets closer and closer to zero. So delta x in this case, right, is x2 minus x1, right? So you can see why this is true, right? As x2 minus x1 gets smaller and smaller, basically you're looking at a narrower and narrower slice of that uh, tangent line. And as you get closer and closer and closer to zero, you more approximate a point, uh, giving you a better approximation of the slope at that point, right? So, uh, so this is the general definition of a derivative, and I want to make sure that you keep this 
in your mind as we start to talk about derivatives of functions and thermodynamics. Keep in mind the base definition of what a derivative is measuring. It's measuring a rate of change. You're looking at how one variable is changing with respect to another. Um, I know that you've done a lot of calculus at this point, done the nuts and bolts, you know, product rule, chain rule, you know, quotient rule, what have you. Uh, but make sure you keep the definition, what a derivative actually means in your mind when we start to look at more complicated things in thermodynamics. OK, so if you need a refresher on derivatives, um, that should be your first stop shop on what you should do. Um, now, one other thing that you should be familiar with is something called higher order derivatives. Higher order derivatives. And higher order derivatives are basically when you continue to take the derivative again and again and again and again, right? So let's say that we take the derivative, let's stick with the same function. Let's say that we take the derivative of the derivative, right? We get some derivative of this function and we take the derivative of that guy again, right? The way that we would write this in Leibniz notation is d squared y over dx squared, right? Now, nobody ever really says squared there, right? Um, this is always interpreted as the second derivative of y, right? Second derivative of y with respect to x, right? So that's how we read this, this Leibniz notation. This is the second derivative of y with respect to x. Just like in this notation, this is the derivative of y with respect to x. This would be the second derivative of y with respect to x. And once we have this function, right, we can come through and uh, differentiate again. So if we do that again, right, we take the derivative of the second derivative, Basically, what happens in your notation is that these exponents just keep going up, right? So this guy is d3, dx to the third, right? So um, obviously, this would be called the third derivative, right? So the third derivative of y with respect to x. And this can keep on going and going and going and going, right? You can get fourth derivative, fifth derivative, sixth derivative, right? Many higher order derivatives that you can just continue to get as you continue to get these functions, right? Um, so these are higher order derivatives. Make sure you're aware of this notation. Um, mostly we'll be using second derivatives a lot, very few third derivatives, um, but you, you need to be sure that you're aware of these um, higher order derivatives that they exist and that we that we use them in this context. OK, the last thing, if you're not familiar um, or if you need a refresher, is on partial derivatives. Now, you usually don't see this until calculus three or your um, maybe tail end of calculus two. whatever point in, in the calculus sequence when you get to multivariable calculus is when you start to see partial derivatives. Right. So this derivative that we looked at, it was a simple one variable function. Y was a function of X. But let's say we have a different function. Let's say that Y is now a function of X and Z. Right. So it's a function of two variables now instead of just one. Um, this is where partial derivatives come into play. Let's say you still want to evaluate how Y changes with respect to X. Well, now you have another independent variable there that can also be, um, you know, changed uh, and affect the function Y. So in order to uh, take this derivative, you'll have to hold the other variable constant, right? And so partial derivatives look like this. So you usually have parentheses, you have a little delta, um, so you'll, you'll be taking the derivative with of y with respect to x. And then in the subscript of the parentheses um, is going to be the variable that you need to hold constant, which in this case is going to be z. So in this case, we can look at that same relationship dy dx, but for a multivariable function, we'll have to hold uh, this variable constant, right? So dx um, with respect to z being held constant right um and the other thing that you'll have to be familiar with is something called mixed partials so let's say we want to take a second derivative right so let's say we take this derivative first right but then we want to come through and take the derivative with respect to z well that's what we we call a mixed partial so let's say we take the derivative with respect to z 
of this guy, right? So we got dy dx at constant z, right? We're going to take the derivative with respect to z. So that would look like this. So you would have the numerator would look very similar to our uh, standard higher order second derivative, right? So you have d squared y, but the numerator is going to now have dz dx, right? This is a mixed partial. Right, all this is telling you is that we've taken two derivatives, right? But the first one was with respect to x, the second one was with respect to z. So it wasn't that we took the uh, second derivative with respect to the same variable twice, we took the second derivative, but our second derivative was with respect to a different variable. This is called a mixed partial derivative. Okay, so this more or less gives you the basics, right? Now, if you need to review any of your standard calculus rules, things like chain rule, product rule, please do. Uh, but make sure that on a, on a, I guess, a more higher level, you're familiar with what these things mean with respect to how they give us new information about a function, right? How they tell us how a function changes with respect to variables.